What's going on, y'all? It's your man, Supreme, and welcome back to another episode of The Real Rap Show. And this is episode 48 of The Real Rap Show, The Real Reason Gangsta Boo Died. Now, before we get this started, I would like to say thank you to everyone who has been tuning in to The Real Rap Show since day one. Everyone in the comment section and also everyone that gives me great feedback about the show. Do not forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted when I drop a new episode of The Real Rap Show. Now, let's get this started. Now, y'all should know the vibes already. Hit my like button before we even start tonight's video because we are going to get deep. Now, if we got anybody watching this from Memphis, Tennessee, we need your response. I want to see Memphis heavy in those comments. Today is January the 1st, 2023, and at around 4 p.m. today, they found Gangsta Boo, member of the legendary group 3-6 Mafia, laid out dead on the porch of her house. Now, in my first video that I did about Gangsta Boo's death, I said, we don't know the cause of death yet. I said, but when we find out, it might be something for us to look into. The cause of death has been revealed. I got the news. We are here. We're going to talk about it. Now, before we go any further, I want to give y'all some history. A lot of y'all is probably familiar with this. I want to talk about the sad clown face. Now, let's take it back a little bit. I told y'all about me. I told y'all where I'm from. I don't live there anymore, but I'm from a place in Brooklyn called Brownsville, and we call it the belly of the beast. I did a whole documentary on it. You need to go watch that. But let's talk about this sad clown face because we're going to get deep, man. Now, when I was a child, I used to live with my grandmother and her son, my uncle, was a heroin addict. And he had no shame. When he would go get this stuff, sometimes I would sit in the room with him and watch him do the whole procedure. Now, this was my first time ever seeing someone do this. But I would watch his face and his face would like drop. And automatically as a kid, that's why I called it that. It looked to me like he was a sad clown. But he wasn't sad. I don't know what it was about his expression, but to me... It looked at like an unhappy clown face. And this was my first time seeing this as a kid. I was seven, eight years old. This was my first time seeing someone's face in that expression. Then he would start jumping around and dancing. But I would watch him do this stuff all the time. And his face would drop into the same expression every time he did it. Also, what I found to be real funny was that my uncle had friends. And sometimes one or two people would come over and they would go in the room and start doing this stuff. And what I found to be real funny was that when he opened the door and I saw these people's faces, they all had the same facial expression. And even as a kid, I started to recognize and remember that that's how people look when they high off of heroin. And coming up in Brownsville, I learned what a lot of stuff was at a very early age. So every time I would see a heroin addict out in the street, you know when you see him out there nodding off, look at their face. It always stuck with me, and I just called it the sad clown face because every one of them has that unhappy clown expression on their face. Hit my like button. Now, that's just a little helpful information to everybody watching this video who might have somebody living in their house that has that clown face expression on their face and you don't know what it is you understand a lot of y'all are not familiar with that so just to put y'all on when you see that 99 percent of the time the person is high off of dope anybody that want to debate what i just said that's what the comment section is for tear those comments up it ain't no drug out here nowhere that make your face like that but dope now, back to the story. Tonight, we're going to put all the drugs on the table. Now, years later, I find out about this group, 3-6 Mafia. I'm heavy into the rap music scene. As a teenager, I stayed with a Walkman. I was out there buying mixtapes. I knew about all the new music, all the artists from different states. I knew about 3-6 Mafia. I knew about Gangsta Boo back then. I had already heard where them dollars at. They had songs like Who Run It? 3-6 Mafia had a lot of joints out at that time that was on fire back in the days. 
But in New York, you didn't hear 3-6 Mafia on the radio. DJs wasn't playing it. The South music wasn't popping in New York back then. I would go to places like, you know, record stores in the hood and places like Sam Goody. And I would get these artists CDs and they tapes. And this is how I would find out about these different artists that wasn't from New York. Just from me browsing around the record store. They would have these real eye-catchy album covers. Do you guys remember how Master P and them was doing their album covers and their mixtapes back in the days? And it was real colorful and had champagne. So 3-6 Mafia had covers that looked like that. And if the cover of the album looked eye-catchy and looked dope to me, I would always buy it. Now, I once saw a photo of 3-6 Mafia. I can't really remember where I saw this photo at. It could have been in Rap Masters Magazine, Word Up Magazine, Right On, or it could have been a photo I seen inside of one of their artworks because, you know, back then, when you bought a tape or a CD, you could take the cover out of the, out of the casing and it was unfoldable. Sometimes it would have the lyrics to the songs. Y'all remember this. It might have been a photo I saw on something like that. And in this picture, it was DJ Paul, Gangsta Boo, Juicy J, and the dude Crunchy Black. And in the photo, the dude DJ Paul, the one with like the hook on his arm, in this photo, I never forget this facial expression. I always knew as a kid that when you see somebody's face like that, they are not drunk. That is dope. In this photo... The dude DJ Paul had the unhappy clown face. And this was not a good photo. In the picture, DJ Paul was like gnawing off like he was high off of dope. And he had the sad clown face. So I'm looking at the picture like laughing to myself back then. Like why would they put this out? Like these are signed artists to a record label and they got a picture of them out to the public with this dude in the picture looking like he gnawed north off a of dope and he had the unhappy clown face. I never forgot that photo. Now, I've never spoken to anybody about this before. I had no reason to. Like I said, I knew a lot about 3-6 Mafia. I had a couple of their CDs. I would see them in magazines. I would see their music videos. Now, let's go. Memphis or anywhere else around the world. Anybody that want to debate what I'm about to say, let's go. Because after I saw that photo with DJ Paul looking like that, and I started to see him more in the future, I said to myself that that nigga right there is fucking with that dope. On the real rap show, we don't sugarcoat nothing over here. When I first saw that dude Crunchy Black do that crazy looking dance that he was doing, I said to myself, that nigga is fucking with that dope. Now, let's be clear. In these places like Memphis, Tennessee, them dirty places like Detroit, you know what I mean? All them places out there in the South where ain't nothing out there but woods and trees and all that. A lot of y'all people is a bunch of dope heads, man. Let's be clear. That's right. Let's talk about it. A lot of y'all people from out there is strung out on crack. Y'all is a bunch of alcoholics. Y'all strung out on cocaine and crystal meth and especially now that fentanyl. And let's talk about the rest of them. That dude, Project Pat, you can look at his face and tell he used to fuck with that dope or probably still fucking with it. Ain't no way in the world Juicy J could get as high as he be getting with Wiz Khalifa. To him, sniffing that boy or however they used to do that ain't nothing to him. You can also tell that Juicy J was fucking with that dope. Now, the reason I gave y'all that little history on what I used to see when I was a kid because I wanted to ask y'all later on in the story because I already know what I know. I already know what it is. But now it's time to ask y'all. Anybody that want to debate this, tear my fucking comment section up. I'm going to flat out say it. Was 3-6 Mafia a group that was a bunch of dope heads? Let's be clear. Talk to me. Was 3-6 Mafia a group that was a bunch of heroin addicts? Let's talk about it. Because look, they find Gangsta Boo dead on her porch from an overdose of cocaine and fentanyl. Or was it fentanyl and something else? This is why I'm asking all of y'all 3-6 Mafia fans and all of y'all people from Memphis, was 3-6 Mafia a bunch of dope heads? Because how she died from it today, if she was on it today, she was on it back then. 
Now, there was some sort of reality show called Marriage Boot Camp that Gangsta Boo was on. And they saying that she was kicked off the show because the producers or somebody on the set found drugs in her bag. So that's clear right there that there was already some type of drug problem in Gangsta Boo's life. Her and her husband or whoever the dude was, because like I said, I don't watch that reality TV shit. I never seen the show. But her and her husband was kicked off the show because both of them was drug addicts. Now, I'm going to ask y'all people from Memphis again. I want to hear from Memphis. How long was Gangsta Boo sniffing dope? How long was Gangsta Boo a cokehead? Now, a lot of times, y'all, when females get hooked on drugs like this, it's because of some dude. So I want to know, did 3-6 Mafia or Project Pat or Crunchy Black or DJ Paul or Juicy J, was she introduced to this drug through the music industry, through the group? Or was it something she'd been doing before the group? Was she introduced to it by some dude she was messing with? Let's talk about it, man. Because I can clearly tell just by looking at every member of that group that all of them people in that group was messing with dope. So to everybody down there in Memphis and everybody that was a fan of Gangsta Boo, what we need to find out now is was it an overdose or was Gangsta Boo sold a bad batch? Because it's a lot of rumors going around that down there in Detroit and out there in Memphis, it's a lot of dudes selling fake fentanyl. Now we seen what happened to Mac Miller, the dude that sold him the stuff got locked up. Should we be looking for somebody in this right here? Is somebody responsible for this? Because what I also found out was there was a dude that was with Gangsta Boo when she overdosed. He overdosed too, but he survived it and went to the hospital. So was that dude, was he the dealer? Did he bring her the stuff? Let's be clear, man. Hit my like button. On this episode of The Real Rap Show, we putting all the drugs on the table. What was they on? I mean, for real, what is the drug of choice for people down there in Memphis? If you ask me, I think y'all down there sniffing that dope. And I'm from the hood. I know what I saw. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. That sad clown face, that shit is epic, man. Tear my comment section up. Straight up and down. 3-6 Mafia, I saw everybody's face. That's why I told y'all all I told y'all about those facial expressions. Them shits don't lie. The eyes is the window to the soul. I've been told y'all that. Three Six Mafia was a goddamn bunch of dope heads. Let's argue. Three Six Mafia was down there, and they didn't make songs about this shit. Three Six Mafia was down there in Memphis sniffing dope. They was out there popping oxycodone. They was drinking lean before that shit was even popular. When I saw DJ Paul in that picture years ago that I told y'all about, that dude was off more than one drug, and it was a nasty-looking photo. I knew back then that they was on some next-level shit. Real talk, groups like that are the founders of the pill poppers, the lean drinkers. Like, it took a while before New York found out about that shit. That shit came from the South. And look, them niggas was having heart attacks and strokes from that shit back then, but it wasn't really popular like that. Look how the nigga Pimp C died, fucking with that lean. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Right now, y'all about to say, oh shit. Because you know who else was fucking with that dope that was in the rap game that a lot of people don't know? That stay with that sad clown face? Them cash money niggas. Now, you know who blew it up and made it hot for cash money and they stopped fucking with him because of his addiction to heroin? And if you from the street, you would know... You know that if he fuck with it and you look at all of their faces, all of them fuck with it. But who made it hot for cash money was BG. Hit my like button because BG was the only one out of cash money where you would look at him and tell that he was fucking with that shit. He even said it in a couple of interviews that he fucked with heroin. I think he's somewhere locked up right now. And I've seen hundreds of photos of Lil Wayne where I could clearly tell just from me knowing that facial expression and how his mouth be drooped down all the time and it looked like he's smiling and frowning at the same time. I could look at him and tell that Lil Wayne used to fuck with that dope too. He probably still do. 
I've seen Baby with that sad clown face a lot of times. And I said to myself, he looked like one of them OG dopehead niggas. They talk all that $100 million shit now, and that's cool. But street niggas know. Even that tall Slim, when his brother, what's his name, Slim, that claim he's sober, he don't do nothing, I can look at his face too. He fuck with that dope too. If he ain't fucking with it now, he used to fuck with it. Now, we're going to get back to Gangsta Boo, but this is the real reason why Cash Money kicked BG ass out the group. Because he was being seen too many times in public, high off of dope. And eventually, people would have put two and two together and realized that all of them is fucking with that shit. And they probably would have never made as much money as they did with corporate America if corporate America would have got wind or found out that these dudes is ex dope heads or they are currently sniffing or shooting dope. You know, like weed, liquor, that's cool. To corporate America, these record labels, that's normal to them. But when it comes to you being hooked on drugs like cocaine and heroin, it kind of messes up business. Now, before we leave New Orleans and head on back to Memphis, remember, you heard it here first, Cash Money Records, and I mean every member of the group, was an active dope head at one time. I don't know what they doing today, but some of them probably still could be fucking with it. Now let's get back to Memphis because I want to ask them a question. Should we be looking for a suspect in Gangsta Boo's death? Was Gangsta Boo an active dope head in the hood that everybody knew about? And if it wasn't dope, was Gangsta Boo an active coke head in the hood that everybody knew about? Right now is the perfect time to answer and ask questions. We just lost one of the biggest female rappers of our time. And every time that we lose one of our big celebrities like this behind some type of drug, we need to put it out there so other people can know. We need to put it out there so the youth coming up could know never to fuck with shit like this. Now, once again, was 3-6 Mafia a group full of dope heads? We want to know who was the dude that OD'd with Gangsta Boo on her porch. Now, we don't know, but usually when people overdose from fentanyl, it's usually they was given a bad batch. Every case that you've heard of people, not all of them, but a lot of cases that you've heard from people OD'ing from fentanyl, it's because it was something in the fentanyl. They was given a bad batch of it. So I'm going to say this again. Should we be looking for someone that gave Gangsta Boo this bad batch, if she got one, on purpose? Was there someone in Memphis that wanted to take Gangsta Boo out the game? Thank you for watching. It's your man Supreme. And you were just now tuned in to another episode of The Real Rap Show. And this was episode 48 of The Real Rap Show. The real reason Gangsta Boo died. Rest in peace to Gangsta Boo. Give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted whenever I drop a new episode of The Real Rap Show. Y'all stay safe out there. Real Rap.